Hey everybody, in this video we'll learn how to play Catan online. Catan is available on Steam, browsers, Android and iOS. Now I'll be playing on Steam but the same rules would apply on all of them. The game starts with a number of hexes which are placed next to each other to form an island. Surrounded by blue hexes which represent the sea and there is one desert hex. At the start of the game, there is a robber which is placed on the desert hex. There are five kinds of resources. The five kinds are the forest, the hills, the fields, the pastures and the mountain. Each of these hexes produce different kinds of resources. The forest produce the lumber, the hills produce the brick, the fields produce the grain and the pastures produce the wool and the mountains produce the ore. And you'll notice that there are tokens placed on each of these resource hexes. Each numbered token represents the roll of the dice. And there are dots on these tokens which are called pips. These basically give you an idea of the probability of a number being drawn. So for example, if you look at 9, there are 4 pips. Which means the odds of someone rolling the number 9 is higher compared to the number 2 which has 1 pip. Also you'll notice the token 6 and 8 have 5 pips each. Which basically means that 6 are drawn quite often. The objective of the game is to reach a certain number of victory points and the first player to reach that is deemed the winner. Primarily we gain victory points by building settlements. Each settlement award a player one victory point. In addition to this we can upgrade these settlements into cities and then each city basically gives you two victory points. Along with this there are development cards that can be drawn during the course of the game and some development cards also award you with an additional victory point. There are two bonus cards available in the game, one representing the largest army and another representing the longest road. Any player who can build the longest road will be awarded two victory points. Similarly, any player who plays three knight cards which are drawn from the development deck will be awarded the largest army. In this game, you need to have 10 victory points to win the game. So let's go ahead and look at how the game is played. Another thing to note is that there is no number 7 token. This is because anytime the player rolls the number 7, he gets to play the robber. So at the start of the game, each player gets to place two settlements anywhere on the board. A settlement has to be placed at the intersection of these hexes. Once a player places a settlement, he gets to build a road. Now each player will place one settlement and one road, each being awarded one victory point. And the second settlement is placed in the reverse order so that the game is fair. And notice that when the second settlement is placed, the player receives one resource adjacent to the settlement that is placed. Now let's look at buildings. In the game, during our turn, we can build roads, settlements, and cities. Each of these cost a certain number of resources. Now, to build a road, we need bricks and lumber. A road can only be built next to another road, a settlement, or a city. Any player who can build five continuous roads or more will receive a bonus card called the longest road. Along with it, he will be awarded two additional victory points. Now to build a settlement, we need four resources. We need bricks, lumber, grain, and wool. Also note that we cannot build a settlement if the three adjacent intersections have other settlements or cities already, including yours. Now each settlement built will award the player one victory point. In addition to this, we can build cities. The cities require five resources, three ores, and two grains. Now cities have to be built on top of settlements. So basically cities are upgrades of settlements and this will award one additional victory point. Anytime during your turn you can trade with other players or the bank. Now you can open the trading console and you can make an offer to other players. Now you can either Offer one resource to receive another resource or you can make multiple offers and the other players can either choose to decline or accept the offer. 
Now, if you wish to trade with the bank, the bank works with a four to one ratio, which means for you to receive one resource of your choice, you'll have to give away four resources of the same kind. You'll notice that on the board at the corner of the islands, there are ports. There are ports represented by question marks and there are ports which are represented by the resources. Now, any time we build a settlement at the edge of these ports, they give you an advantage during trading. Now, if you have a settlement built on the question mark port, you'll be able to trade three resources for any resource of your choice instead of four is to one. Similarly, if you have a settlement built next to a particular resource, you'll be able to trade two of those resources for any other resource of your choice. When we roll a seven, every player who has more than seven cards will have to return half of their cards back to the deck. In addition to this, we can move the robber. Now the robber can be placed on any of the resource hexes or the desert. When placed on a resource hex, any time during the game, when that number is rolled, all the adjacent cities and the settlements will not receive their resources. So as a strategy, when we roll the number seven, we can place the robber on a hex where our opponents have their cities and settlements placed. Also, when we move the robber, we can receive one random resource card from any of the opponents who have a settlement or a city adjacent to that hex. Now let us look at the development cards. There are three kinds of development cards, the Knights, Progress and Victory cards. Also to pick up a development card, you have to wait for your turn and you can pick it up with three resources, which is the Wolf, the Grain and the Ore. There are three kinds of development cards, the Knights, the Progress and the Victory cards. Every time we draw a development card, they are hidden from the other players until we play the card. The knight card, when played, allows you to move the robber to any of the hexes and you'll be able to receive one random resource from any of the player adjacent to the hex where the robber is. Progress card basically represents a set of cards that give a player different advantages. Some will allow a player to randomly pick cards from an opponent. Some will allow you to pick a kind of resource and the other players will have to give all the resources that they have to the player. The victory point card basically awards the player with an additional victory point. Now this card is never revealed to the other players. This gives you an advantage because the other players would not know that you have a victory point card. And so if you have eight victory points, the other players would only see seven. Now there are two kinds of bonus cards, the longest road and the largest army. Any player who builds five or more continuous road will be awarded the longest road bonus card and they will receive two additional victory points along with it. Any other player can receive the longest road card as long as they build one additional road than the player holding it. Similarly, the largest army bonus card is awarded to a player who has played three or more knight cards. Knight cards are drawn from the development card deck. Along with the bonus card, the player will also be awarded two additional victory points. Now winning the game, the first player who reaches 10 victory points on their turn wins the game. Well, that's it guys. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.